Well, welcome to the workshop once again. And as you can see, quite a different workshop. Done a lot of rearranging, and I'm now able to get a car in, although on this occasion a very small and fairly horrible little car. Another Gee Whiz. They're useful little runabouts. Not exactly something that I particularly enjoy driving. However, uh, this one was saved from having a motorcycle engine put in it. Um, the people involved decided it was a little bit too nice and a little bit too much work. Uh, it came without batteries and as you can see I have a different battery pack in here. I have a set of 14 leaf modules uh, which gives me roughly equivalent to the original 48 volts uh, a little bit higher and these are mounted on a steel frame and that steel frame is bolted down into the chassis rails I modified some of the bus bars so the modules are con connected in pairs you can see the uh, the bus bar spanning two pairs of two modules and I have a new BMS battery monitoring system wiring harness actually technically it's a battery management system seeing as it is capable of doing balancing I have a uh, Molex Minifit Junior connector in there and that all connects do this generic Chinese BMS module. Um, I have featured this in a previous video because I, I modified it. Um, as they are designed and the application is really only meant for very lightweight stuff, uh, bicycles, power tools, the current flows through this bank of MOSFETs both for charging and discharging. Um, now this vehicle is capable of pulling something like 350 amps peak and by the time you've got a board big enough that's a bit unwieldy, uh, it's quite lossy and the BMS unit will disconnect the battery if any cell gets too low while driving or too high driving under regen or under charge. Now you really should not have the battery disconnecting itself in a high powered system. What it should do is send a signal to the charger to stop charging if a cell's high or to the motor controller um, to reduce its current demand or shut down its current demand if a cell gets too low. So you can see I've got the, the wiring um, from the modifications I made coming up to a little connector and that will next have a, an interface board which will be able to um, in fact signal the charger to increase its output um, when charging and then as soon as the cell hits the limit it will stop asking it to increase its output and I will interface it to the controller see over there um, this has two inputs that connected to the original energy management system as Reva described it which were um, an eco mode if the state of charge dropped below 20% and a limp mode if the voltage dropped too low so I've only got one output and that will just get connected to the limp mode so at a certain voltage which is programmable on the BMS module it will tell the motor controller to go into limp mode and then the voltage has to rise up to a certain extent before that will turn off so I can set the limp mode um, to come in on the BMS above a minimum cell voltage and you may end up with a bit of oscillation in that you go into the limp mode the voltage rises up and it goes back into full power mode and you'll feel that in the vehicle performance it's not going to be that jerky but this will act as a warning that you're getting low and you keep your 
you basically do manual control to keep the current draw below the point at which any cell is falling and hopefully that allows you to to crawl to your next charge point. I don't expect to ever trigger it with the usage I put the vehicle to. If for any reason I drove the vehicle with the battery already in a low state of charge that will prevent me from damaging any cells and give me a, a physical warning. The other thing I have done that's the modification, as I said it was covered in the other video, um, you can see those two wires soldered onto the board. Uh, they replace the set current sense resistors. You can see those three empty rectangles. There were three more on the other side of the board that were the original current sense resistors. Those have been removed and that wiring now leads to this device. You can see the little red terminals and one screw terminal, the others hidden underneath the brown wires. That is the high current sense resistor, you know, rated for several hundred amps. And the um, PC software that comes with these BMS units um, allows you to calibrate the current sensor. And it's roughly done at the moment and it's, it's reading within, within ballpark. It's within a, a, a few amps, certainly at charge current levels. This is just a way of getting this car up and running uh, so that it can replace my other G-Wiz, which is increasingly falling to bits. Uh, another notable little modification is the way the 12 volt system works in these vehicles. This unit here is the battery charger. Um, and the labels are upside down, but you should better read them. You've got plus 48 ground and 12 volt. Well, it's not only the battery charger, it is also the DC to DC converter that provides 12 volt for all the normal 12 volt electrics, you know, lighting indicators and so on. So that 48 volt terminal is both an output when charging, but an input when driving. And that is normally permanently connected to the battery. So it's always drawing a bit of current from the battery and always outputting 12 volt. So if you leave the vehicle standing for any length of time, it runs the battery down. And that's probably what happened to this G-Wiz that caused someone to abandon it. And it certainly is what happened to another one I've got in storage that someone just left it and it ran the batteries effectively down to zero. So in order to get around this problem, I moved the 48 volt feed, which would normally connect to here, which is directly connected to the battery. And I initially just so that the vehicle was drivable, but I could not worry about having leaving it standing, connected it to this side of the main contactor. Now the ignition circuit on these vehicles is 48 volt, so I could still turn the car on and when that contactor closed it then powered up the DC to DC converter and gave me the 12 volt. Because that meant that I couldn't charge because the battery was no longer connected to the charger or input to the DC to DC converter depending on how you're looking at it. So up here is a contactor mounted on a little bit of DIN rail and that is connected effectively. Yeah, everything's hidden. But there is um there were a pair of 240 volt wires that were normally connected to the charge port that were the feed for the battery heater when it had lead acid batteries. So now when you plug in a charging cable and supply mains that contactor closes and 
this wire directly from the battery gets fed into the contactor. Uh, it's bridged across to a seven se second set of contacts. Each set of contacts is rated 40 amps, but the charger output is in theory 40 amps. So just to um, share the current a little bit, lower, lower the, the load on one set of contacts, it's bridged across to the next set of contacts. Same on this end. Um, and it's relatively heavy brown wire. Here's the one that runs across to the 48 volt terminal. So that connects the charger to the battery whenever the charger is powered up by mains. For the DC to DC converter side, these two blue wires go to the two AC inputs of a single phase 20 amp bridge rectifier. And then the positive output only, I'm not using the negative, the positive output goes across to the contactor where it is commoned up with the uh, input to the DC to DC converter. So this means that when that contactor is closed, when you turn the key on, current is able to flow through the diode and to the DC to DC converter input. It's not 100% ideal at this stage because the um, central locking um, and immobiliser circuit is um, run from 12 volt and I no longer have any 12 volt when the vehicle is off. Um, to do that I will have to add a battery to provide that standby power um, which is a good idea anyway uh, because it means that if I should have a you know a main fuse failure as the vehicle was designed I've got no electrics whatsoever can't even run the hazard lights whereas if I have a 12 volt battery I will be able to do so So that's basically where we are on this little project. I was just about to put the uh, the battery cover on and the seat back in, so I thought I'd shoot a little video.